productive years are also their reproductive years. And um, this particular aspect is not even made allowance for, generally. Maternity leave is hardly granted. So many of these women find themselves struggling. In fact, there are people who don't take their entitlements because they are so scared that they'll be left out. So these tensions of work, balancing life and work, impacts women disproportionately to men. And I think we should recognize that because that is one of the reasons why uh, we find uh, you know, these major gaps occurring, even in terms of presence at the higher echelons. Um, so that's one aspect. Um, sexual harassment, of course, has emerged as a very major issue. And um, that study, uh, study said it was so commonplace, but most people don't want to talk about it because they are a little worried that they would um, have to serve, uh, uh, I mean, serve notice on, on managements and so on. So they are nervous. There's also uh, the kind of problems women face when they go out into the field, not just within their organizations, but when they go out into the field. We've all heard, I wonder how many of you remember, but last uh, July we had the case of a photojournalist being uh, gang raped. So these are incidents that we should keep note of and understand and try and also um, raise our voices for, you know, uh, changing these realities. We have talked about gender in terms of their presence, women's presence, but what about how gender was portrayed in the media? There is the Media Gender Monitoring Project which came out. It's a multinational sampling of news stories and they came up with some very interesting data from 76 countries and it suggests that the percentage of women making it as a subject, as a source of news, is still only 24% the world over. While this is an improvement on the results of a decade ago, when the figure was just 18%, at this rate of change, it'll take another 40 years before men and women enjoy some parity in terms of presence in their media. The future is rife with change. Gender is itself undergoing a definitional revolution with greater recognition of the fluid, uh, fluidity of sexual identity. The media, of course, has historically played a role in passing off the man-woman binary as part of the natural order. We, we've heard of um, uh, Section 377 being struck down. Now, wh what does it mean? Why is it important that uh, we should actually argue against that? Because it's the right of every person to have um, to make their choices, sexual or otherwise. And it's so important that we recognize people for their uh, their bodily integrity, their ability to uh, of free movement. These are issues that are part of our constitutional guarantees. But somehow, when it comes to being translated in reality, they never happen. It doesn't happen. And therefore, we should uh, engage with these uh, verdicts that happen. I think uh, the Supreme Court's uh, dismissal of, uh, you know, after all, Section 377, what is it? it it's actually struck down or read down uh, uh, a provision in the Indian Penal Code, which actually uh, criminalizes same-sex um, uh, relationships. Now, um, here the Supreme Court has suggested that the parliament do something about it, whether parliament would be able to do it, given the kind of uh, response to these issues in society at large is the big issue today. We are all bound by one common experience and that is the experience of being a human being. And therefore, these universal rights are important. And the constitution of India and constitutions of other countries too have recognized this. So uh, as you go out into the world, after you finish this course here, I would urge you to always read and, and read around subjects, understand the world in a larger way. These are issues that don't belong just to parliament, they belong to you.
Thank you very much. Thank you.